Hi everyone, my name is Frankie and welcome to a movie a day challenge. Today is day number 291 and it's October 18th, 2018. Today I'll be watching the 1987 horror film Return to Horror High. Now, in each episode of A Movie A Day Challenge, I pick one film that I've never seen before. And then I take that movie's movie poster and place it to the side of me. I do this because I absolutely have no idea of what the film that I'm about to watch is about. And being that I have absolutely no clue about the film or what it's about, I feel like I need to draw some type of conclusion of what I think the film may be about based solely on the movie poster itself. In saying this, let's go ahead and take a look at the 1987 horror film movie poster to return to horror high. Now, I'm going to admit this. This is pretty funny. I mean, you have a skeleton body. You know, I'm going to say it's a skeleton body because it's the body of a skeleton. And it's basically in a cheerleading outfit on the side of the title of this movie, Return to Horror High. And it's pretty funny, you know, you're going to expect that it deals with uh, high school in a way, so what better way to deal with high school than having a cheerleader who's basically dead and corpse is just next to the actual title of the film. It's funny, sort of paradising stuff that went on with 80s films, with high school films in a way. So, you know, when I look at it, I'm thinking, okay, I know that it is something to deal with horror because there's a skeleton on the cover of the marketing, uh, you know, poster, but also it's pretty interesting and quite funny. And I'm interested in watching this film. I look forward to sitting down and enjoying the 1987 horror film Return to Horror High. Now, after I finish analyzing the movie poster itself, I'm going to let you, the viewer, know that I'm going to go ahead and watch Return to Horror High. But before I go and do that, I want to let you, the viewer, know that after I finish watching Return to Horror High, I then come back and tell you a little bit about the film. However, I don't go in great detail about the movie. You see, I don't release any major spoilers about the film, nor do I tell you anything about the movie's plot either. Why? Well, because I don't want to ruin your chance at watching a really great film for the first time. And since this is also my first time watching Return to Horror High as well, I wouldn't want anyone to spoil the film for me by telling me any major spoilers about the film or telling me anything about the movie's plot either. Now, in case you've previously seen the 1987 horror film Return to Horror High previously, then please feel free to re substitute Return to Horror High for another film for your viewing pleasure. It doesn't even have to be in the genre of horror films. This way you can take part in a movie a day challenge and possibly watch each film along with me as I go along. In saying that, I'm going to go ahead right now and watch the 1987 horror film Return to Horror High. And then I'm going to come back and tell you a little bit about the film. I'll be right back. I just finished the 1987 horror film Return to Horror High, and I want to let you, the viewer, know that Return to Horror High, in my opinion, is a bad movie. I say that it's a bad movie based on three things. The first being that it is a story within a story. Literally, it is a film in a film. And you, the viewer, have to pay attention because they never tell you what part of the story is being explained to you. So you don't know if it's believable to be part of the original story or if it's the part of the film being a film. So you're left in confusion. So it's very puzzling at times. And when I sit down and enjoy a movie, I don't want to be confused. Number two, second thing is the acting in this film. It's pretty cheesy. Not only is it pretty cheesy, but there are two very popular actors in this film that I really didn't think they would lend their time to this. But it was probably, you know, some role given to them. One person being George Clooney, a famous actor there, and the other being the original Marsha Brady from The Brady Bunch. I apologize for not knowing her name. But it's pretty weird to see, you know, two known actors in a film like this and their acting be better than the entire other cast in the film. I don't know why, but the entire other cast could have gotten better picks for this film. You know, could have spent some more money. Uh, don't know why, but cheesy acting. Just put it that way. And just to let you know, both George Clooney and the girl who played Marsha Brady aren't even in the film that much. 
Just wanted to point that out to you. So, for the rest of the whole film, it's basically just cheesy acting. Number three. The third being is, is this. The horror parts in this film are cool to see. However, I really felt that the overall villain character, the, the person that goes around and commits everything, basically could have come up with a better, I don't know, costume, get alone presence, because I really didn't know what was going on. And because due to the confusion of part A and part B of the story, you don't know who the killer is. And I understand that. I like the understanding of having that feeling of being in this mysterious way of knowing the killer of a film. But it goes part A for one part and then part B for another. So you don't know what to believe. And you're sitting there liking, just, just sitting there like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just go with it. I'll, I'll just go with it. Let it play out, blah, blah, blah. And by the end of it, you're like, oh. The overall climax of this film made absolutely no sense whatsoever. The writing for this film, yeah, let's add a fourth. The writing of the movie itself. The explanation of the story is pretty bad. Pretty bad. And what goes on, there is a bunch of mistakes in the film that I found out that just went nowhere. Went nowhere. While watching this, don't know why. But, whatever. Whatever. Not going to go into it, but I really thought that the climax of the film could have been redone at least. And the ending, the actual ending of the film, could have been redone because it was pretty cheesy and dumb the way they ended it. But, just my opinion. Would I recommend it to a family member or friend? No, I wouldn't. Would I watch Return to Horror High again? No, I would not. This is a one and done film for a movie a day challenge. Maybe when you watch Return to Horror High, you'll have a different experience than I did and enjoy the film for what it is. Was I entertained by it? Yes. Somewhat. Did I like it? No, I did not. If you enjoyed today's episode, you see that thumbs up underneath this uh, video right here? Click it. Give us a like for today's episode. As you're doing that, maybe you've seen the 1987 horror film Return to Horror High and liked it. Maybe you've seen it and you didn't like it. Maybe you're interested in watching the film. You're hearing this review about it. You're going to go watch the movie after watching this review and then come back and write something. Well, whichever the three may be, please tell me in the comment box down below. Right down there. Right down there. And as you're doing that, you see that word subscribe underneath this video? Click it. Subscribe to a movie a day challenge. Now, tomorrow is day number 292 of a movie a day challenge. And I'll be watching the 2015 horror film, The Final Girl. My name is Frankie. I will be here tomorrow for day number 292 and the 2015 horror film, The Final Girls. I will see you tomorrow.